Why? And I got it. I got yes, it. Yes, Diana, and it will behave like that. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 stupidest moments on Judge Judy. Listen, there are certain things that you can't help, and one of those things, Mr. Wallen, is stupid. I can't help you. For this list, we'll be looking at the dumbest incidents, comments, or arguments that were brought into or occurred in the judge's court. Which Judge Judy moment gave you secondhand embarrassment? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Not horsing around. It's safe to say the plaintiff didn't see this verdict coming. In a hilariously short segment, Judge Judy hears a case involving a leased horse. Which means she owes you $1,400. Yes. Right? Yes. Good. Judgment's on the clown to claim for $1,400. We're done. Thank you. But get this, the plaintiff is suing for board and feed of a horse that she never finished paying for. So not only is she not winning her case, she still owes $1,400. No, you may what? step out. I get oh, okay. The defendant's delighted shock is funny enough, but it's the plaintiff's overly dramatic reaction that makes this moment absolutely ridiculous. It's the definition of cringeworthy. Sometimes justice is swift. Sometimes it's so swift that it can leave you freaking out on the bench outside the courtroom. Because she didn't get away with a lie. Oh, my night. <sighs> Number 19. One mistake after another. Did he think he was showing up to court or an audition? You would have mm. this story at least for two, three hours in front of a mirror. I'd like you to give it to me without the rehearsed in front of a mirror approach. Either way, the judge is not having this defendant's clearly rehearsed story about how he was not at fault for wrecking his friend's motorcycle. After she's finished making mincemeat of his courtroom demeanor, she starts poking holes in his story. Two minutes ago, you told me you didn't know anybody there, really. And then you just told me that you were the only one there who had to get up to go to work the next day. Once she shakes him up a little, he starts admitting to other indiscretions involving other bikes he had no license to drive. You can tell that even through her frustration, Judge Judy is likely enjoying watching him crash and burn. Well, I have previous experience on dirt bikes, and I have driven bikes on the Don't, road before. Just a second. Are you trying to tell me that you've broken the law before? Is that what you're telling me? Litigants like this just make her job so much easier. Number 18. Wrong outfit, wrong attitude. Judge Judy doesn't ask for much. She just wants you to tell the truth, wear the proper attire, and not be a complete moron. This witness's beer equals fun shirt was his first mistake. And that you are an intelligent thinking person, that shirt that you're wearing belies that fact. Thanks, my suit's at the cross. I didn't ask, that doesn't require an answer, sir. After all, it doesn't take a genius to know that this isn't appropriate courtroom attire. But the defendant's unearned smugness and childish comments about being real are the icing on top of the stupid cake. And to come to a court, come to a court. I don't care if you go into a real. beach. Bye. Hey. Be real I'm saying, court. Hey, listen Do you to want me. me to be fake with listen. you? Her pot shots at the unflappable Judge Judy just read as bizarre. Did he wear a shirt like that? No, he didn't. Of course not. Because he knew better, because it was disrespectful. No, 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 it's different. It's because we loved my mother and we wanted to do something for my mother. We don't love you. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the judge rarely works out. And by rarely, we mean never. Number 17, no interruptions. This plaintiff is the owner of a motorcycle rental business who clearly doesn't take kindly to cancellations. Her strict implementation of a no-refunds policy is arguably questionable, but her courtroom behavior is downright impossible. The dates are not correct. The facts are correct. The dates are not correct. He called three days after he booked. Great. I have no consolation. Just a second. No I'm cancellation speaking. policy. Hey, I'm speaking. Listen no to me. No cancellation policy. As soon as the judge starts telling her why she's wrong and why her business practices are unfair, she can't stop interrupting. Watching the woman spin out in an attempt to add, edit, or completely contradict her previous statements is maddening to watch. If you're going to talk over me, I'm going to throw you out of why here and I didn't even explain. Would be my question. Hey, just a second. If you're going to try to talk over me. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to throw you out. Yes, ma'am. It would be my pleasure anyway. However, seeing the judge dismiss her case is so, so sweet. Staying silent probably wouldn't have helped her much, but it sure would have made the whole shtick appear a little less ridiculous. Reserved and used my business before. 
three times. That understood and they the call, policy. Hey, just that understood the policy. Goodbye. Your case is dismissed. That's We're great. done. Number 16, unpeaceful protest. These two neighbors decided to bring their unhinged feud to the courtroom. This long-standing conflict escalated to the defendant staging a protest in front of the plaintiff's house, spewing profanities into a bullhorn. Luckily for us, it's all been caught on video. Gotta have something to show the cops when they get here. The defendant insists she was exercising her First Amendment right, and that's not a crime. The judge, however, insists that her conduct was disorderly, which actually is a crime. You can exercise your First Amendment rights, but if your conduct is disorderly, they can arrest you. Do you understand? It wasn't just a conduct. It was oh, I would... I could actually make a case for that. To be honest, the plaintiff doesn't come off too well either. Considering this entire debacle started over something as trivial as fallen hedge trimmings and debris. And he will not leave me alone. He's been harassing me for two and a half years, and every time a twig falls in his yard, he calls the cops on me, and I felt that this was my only last resort. It almost feels like these two deserve each other. Number 15, no tolerance for lying. A case about a car accident takes a dark turn, literally. These litigants were in the middle of an argument while the plaintiff was driving, and he alleges the defendant took control of the vehicle and caused an accident while intoxicated. I'm just asking you a question. So the first time when you said you have anything to drink, you said no. I just don't believe that you went to a graduation party and you didn't have anything to drink. You intimidated me a little bit, so that was why I said no. Yet both have a little trouble being honest. However, introducing liars to the truth is Judge Judy's specialty. The police memorialized what you told them. Yes. So that my question is, you lied to the police. <sighs> yes, I lied. After busting the plaintiff for a stupid lie early in the case, she turns her laser focus on the defendant. Her version of events doesn't clearly match up with the police report, which the judge is not having. He was telling yeah, me to. He was yelling at me over and over again. You mean in front of the police, he was saying, lie to the police, lie to the police. <laughs> <laughs> the police don't magically appear when a crash happens, do they? You can probably guess what the final ruling ended up being here. Number 14, moronic behavior. Divorce can be messy, but in the Judge Judy courtroom, outrageous behavior is even messier. As a family court judge for many years, Judith Scheindlin definitely seems to have a soft spot for children caught up in divorces. You don't tell her first because you feel as if you have to get it off your chest that you are messing around. He was messing around first, Your Honor. This defendant doesn't have to say more than a few words in court to earn her ire. Why, you ask? Well, she, without evidence, once told her young daughter that her ex, i.e. the little one's father, may not actually be her father. And you told her that there was a chance that he wasn't her father. Yes. And you did that because I don't believe in keeping secrets from my kids. Yes. You're a moron. It goes without saying, but this makes the judge lose it. The woman's lack of remorse just makes it even more frustrating and ultimately more satisfying as Judge Judy lays into her. You are one of the most marginal people that I've come across in a long time and you haven't even said two words. A moron! And you still don't even get it. Number 13, salad dressing. The customer is always right, sometimes. Maybe not this guy, though. I said, we have a credit, and I shut the door. Very grown up of you. Yeah. <laughs> you think that was right? Mm. Come see, come saw. What is come see, come saw? Well, I had a credit. We can all relate to the frustration that comes with someone messing up your delivery order. But this plaintiff decided that he deserved a credit for an entire sandwich due to forgotten salad dressing on a previous order. You see, he had previously wanted that extra dressing for a sandwich. The dressing comes with a salad. You want dressing for your sandwich, go to the store and buy a bottle of dressing so you have dressing for the sandwich. But it's not the same dressing. That Judge Judy actually has to explain to him why he's so wrong probably has her wondering why she spent all that money on a law degree. It's so stupid that it's easy to forget this is actually a vandalism case that the plaintiff does win. Mr. Erkin said you're a big baby. Okay. That doesn't Thank mean you. you're a big baby. Thank you. That doesn't mean your people were entitled to vandalize his house. When the judge renders her final judgment, though, she knocks off the cost of the meal. $229.23 less 
12. <laughs> 217.23. Judgment for the plaintiff, that's all. Number 12. Interpretive Dance Judge Judy probably thought she had seen it all, but alas, this defendant had to repeatedly replace a makeup artist, the plaintiff, because she was often under the influence at work. Melissa was incapable of doing her work. She was smoking and drinking. Her action became so bizarre, it was hilarious at times, dangerous at times. When asked to give an example of her erratic and out-of-control behavior, the man decides to do a dramatic recreation. Saturday the 24th of January. I got on the set and I was like, yo, you need to go talk to Melissa. I'm like, what's going on? And they say, I don't know what's up. His performance is hard to describe, but it's nothing short of beautiful, heartfelt, and stirring. No one who experienced it will ever be the same. In all seriousness, everyone watching seems like they can't believe their eyes. Even his witness can't keep it together after that. Why? Why? I got it. I got yes, Your Honor, and it was behaved like that. Was it necessary? No. Was it dumb? Sure. Are we better for having watched it? Absolutely. Number 11. Poorly done research. When the judge steps out to take care of her cough, the plaintiff sees an opportunity to joke with his friend and taunt his cousin, aka the defendant. Did you watch the show, Travis? Mm -hmm. No? You never watched it before? Oh my god. Research, babe. It's all rather immature, to say the least. As soon as she returns, though, she lets him know the business. She watched his entire overconfident monologue, and let's just say she's far from impressed, and tells him so. A television set in my room. And you know what was playing? Waddell. Okay. Waddell being an idiot. We're betting she would have seen through him quickly, even without this. But she does almost seem grateful that he gave her the ammunition to call him out for being an idiot on national TV. It's among the most satisfying examples of instant karma we've ever seen on this show. That your family will know you're an idiot. Your friends will know you're an idiot. Everybody here will know you're an idiot. 10 million people in the United States will know you're an idiot. Number 10. Don't sass the judge. Let's just begin by saying that this case is titled Teen Keyed Girl's Car because she deserved it. Not a promising start, right? But I was with Michaela the night that she did it. Your Honor, I actually have the text with Michaela and she's admitted to doing it. She said it was with a dog leash. We meet former cohabitants, Michaela and Sierra, who come to the court after the former scratched the latter's car. There's a bizarre and slightly tragic story about their living situation, but the part that qualifies this case for our list comes toward the end. Sounds like something out of Pinocchio and the land yeah. of lost children. Yeah. Because this is what the case is about. Your best friend was Nick. Yes. Your parents asked you to leave, you left. The judge is sympathetic to the defendant's troubled background and tries to offer her some advice. Michaela interrupts with what she thinks is a smart mouth question. And the only one who's gonna have to live with the miserable life that you're creating for yourself is you. I have a question. Yes. You said you get paid to lecture me or not, so why do you choose to? Of course, it backfires when the judge replies to her fresh mouth, shutting her up once and for all. And you look like a reasonably intelligent young woman. You're certainly a nice looking young woman. You probably have a great deal of potential. You're taking it and throwing it down the toilet. $684, judgment for the plaintiff. Number nine, the judge catches a liar. You know how when claimants enter the court, they're asked to take an oath of truth? Well, you should probably be especially afraid of fibbing to this judge. You're gonna tell me a story. Yes, ma'am. If it's the same story that you told me in here, I may or may not believe you. Do you understand? I understand. She suspects the plaintiff's story is false and gives him several opportunities to come clean. Still, he sticks to his guns, and even his partner backs him up. But it all falls apart when the judge suggests they make a call to the plaintiff's father-in-law. What is your father going to tell me? Yes. That he did? Yes. Fine. Let's get his phone number. That's not necessarily true, okay? That should have been his cue to stop talking and take the loss. But he continues to defend himself. Poorly, by the way. You see how easy it is? But ma'am, look, because the car was taken, because the car was taken. There's no such word. Listen okay. to me. There's I'm no sorry. such word as taken. No matter how well rehearsed your tall tale might be, Judge Judy can always sniff out a lie. 
Number eight, you can't always help stupidity. We're not entirely convinced that this plaintiff has ever watched Judge Judy before. Well, listen, if you chose to be a schlemiel and live that way, that's your issue. She chose not to be a schlemiel. She did live that way. You honor? You're not, you're not, hey! He's arguing that his ex won't return or pay him back for a tractor, while she's counterclaiming that he owes her for a truck. To make matters worse, the defendant kicked him out of the house after he embarked on a relationship with her best friend. You left. Not willingly. Well, you didn't expect her to live in a situation where you had a more than friendly relationship with her best friend. Luckily, the judge was there to serve justice and highlight the plaintiff's stupidity. Well, actually, she doesn't have to do much. The plaintiff pretty much confesses to his own idiocy. Just a second, that's what we're talking about. She says, and the house that I paid for that she's still living in. Really, are you really that dumb to put a house in her name Yes. Just a second. Judge Judy just sums it up really neatly. Listen, there are certain things that you can't help, and one of those things, Mr. Wallen, is stupid. I can't help you. Number seven, do you want the TV or not? In this ridiculous argument between exes, Judge Judy has her patience tested by an aggravatingly stubborn litigant. All she wants to know is does he want his television back? But his replies suggest this argument isn't even about the item. Is it still in your living room? Yes and still functioning. Yes. And you want it back? No, I just want to get compensated for no. the reason why. No. Why not? There's nothing complicated about her question, which only warrants a yes or no answer. However, the plaintiff insists on deflecting or posing his own questions so incessantly that we just want to bang our heads against a wall. Do you want the, the television back? Is yes she going to fix that too? No. Do you want the so television back? I need to get compensated for it. <laughs> All right, so then we're done with the TV. Just as we think it's finally settled, the whole thing starts again over a computer. Clearly, this guy was confident he would win, and he refuses to go down quietly. You should run it on the computer upstairs. No, 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 that's not my computer. I don't care. No, 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 and these are the programs that I had. She can't do anything about that. Yes, she can. Jeez, man, just stop talking. Number six, what's rocket science? Oh, the internet. It's a cesspool of embarrassingly dumb moments people can never live down. And indeed, this is one of those. I saw Jen crouching down by the pool with her iPhone in her left hand, but I didn't see her iPhone. I came at her from me, saw her crouching down before her iPhone in her left hand, but you didn't see her iPhone. The plaintiff asked for reimbursement after her friend playfully pushed her into a pool while she was holding her iPhone. I felt awful after it happened. Well, you felt awful. That means you pay for it if you feel awful. Well, I mean, it was the atmosphere of the party. We were all pushing each other in. She didn't push anybody in. No. Grow up. You don't need a background in law to figure out the fairest solution here. Or in Judge Judy's words, it's not rocket science. After all, what is rocket science? Rocket science is when the scientists find out things about space. <laughs> I think. We don't know whether to laugh or go, aw, honey, or sit her down with a rocket science for dummies book. The audience chooses to laugh, leading the woman to timidly rethink her answer. Sometimes, silence is golden. Unfortunately, she learns that the hard way. Number five, nothing gets past the judge. You know what sets Judge Judy's court apart from any run-of-the-mill courtroom? It's on television. This means everything you say and do is recorded, and that little weird thing they attach to litigants at the beginning is a microphone. You are not getting anything. Do you understand? Yes. Perfect. We're dog. done. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Get the dog. <laughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. Step out. What did he just say? Wait here. Excuse yeah. me. I didn't say no, none, Your Honor. I want to know what he just said. Clearly, this guy didn't get the memo because he rejected the judge's ruling under his breath. That you would be bound by this court's determination. When I ruled that she got the dog back, what you said was, she's not getting the dog. Did he forget that he was mic'd up, or does he not know how a microphone works? Either way, he awakens the judge's beast mode, and she reminds him of the contract he signed before appearing on the show when the case later gets recalled. We have a contract. Yes, Your Honor. You and this program, you abide by my decision, or we do a zippity doo -dah for you, including getting you home. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you ask us, he got off lightly, but his idiocy will forever live in infamy online. Number four, guess who's not coming to dinner? 
This case involves two sisters and a deer who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. She wanted to go to the store. There was an accident. It was unavoidable. She hit a deer, damaged the car, and her defense is you should have had better insurance. Is that your defense? The defendant hit the poor animal while driving her sister's car and followed up with arguably the most rational decision. She waited for the authorities to, oh no, wait, she decided to eat it? Is that true? Yes, ma'am, and she even offered me some, but I'm not having a rigor mortis stew by now. did not have rigor mortis, so I went back. At least she was kind enough to offer her sister some, but we guess she just doesn't have a taste for rigor mortis stew. This whole exchange is hilariously unhinged, and we don't know how everyone got through without collapsing in fits of giggles. You know, we talked about it and looked at everything, but then the next morning she come over there just hollering at me, banging on my door telling me how I owed her and all this, and I've helped her with a lot of stuff in the past. And Maybe they feared they'd end up with a dinner invitation, too. Number 3. Attack of the Tupperware Karina Roy, also known as Tupperware Lady, has become somewhat of a Judge Judy icon. And threw all of her Tupperware on me. She didn't throw all of her Tupperware on you. Yes, her. she did. Yes, did she, she did. Miss Roy, you're standing there, so what is what you tell me? She took out each piece of Tupperware from the cupboard and threw it at you? We're not sure exactly where she thought she was, but it can't have been this judge's courtroom. Her animated storytelling is so incompatible with the tale she's weaving that we can hardly believe our ears. Then she kept standing there and screaming, you know, how dare you and don't you dare, don't you even dare, Karina, shame on you, shame on you. Her tone is unnecessarily dramatic, and every detail is accompanied by theatrical arm gestures gestures, and over Tupperware. Who knew that containers could be the source of such drama? She's leaning her whole body into me, pointing her finger in my face. How dare you? Don't you even dare. Shame on you. That's it. I want you out of here. And she hit my head with her finger. The audience is clearly amused, but the judge most certainly isn't. Did Roy really think Judge Judy would be swayed by her dramatics? Anna stood up and said, hey, and looking directly at me, and said, hey, hey, the babies." The babies. Way to make the most of your 15 minutes of fame, eh? Number two, losers. Just a little Judge Judy 101. When you pay this courtroom a visit, you check your attitude at the door. Do you get it? Do you get it? They're manipulative. She's a problem. Your daughter is a problem. Unfortunately, that's not what this defendant chose to do, bringing the metaphorical gavel down on her own head hard. Throughout the case, the litigant repeatedly proves that she's not the brightest bulb and has somewhat of a temper. We were being dumb and then he confronts two tiny women in front of the house while him, and it wasn't three, it was like five or six of what? his friends. Still, you have to commend her on her unwavering determination to sway things her way. She sees nothing wrong with her behavior, which included cussing out the plaintiff and his friends. Remind us why again? Because they're losers. Oh. Her post-case confessionals don't do her any favors either. I don't think it's this is a fair justice. We won. We got what we came here for, so it's all that matters to me. You can take his poor four grand because she doesn't work and go friggin' have fun with it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. A premature confession. Being a judge means making a lot of tough calls, so it must be nice when the litigants do some of the heavy lifting once in a while. Give me what was stolen. My wallet. What I had was in your wallet? It was 50 bucks. Okay. I had to replace all my IDs. I had gift cards in there. This infamous case sees the plaintiff, Ginny Paradeza, accuse the defendants of stealing her purse. She provides the judge with a list of stolen items, unexpectedly assisted by one of the men who's denying the theft. My earpiece and a calculator. There was no earpiece in her mail. I thought it. <laughs> yes, that's what you heard. The defendant corrects the plaintiff's account and basically hands her the win. There aren't many moronic moments that elicit laughter from Judge Judy, but she just can't help herself. <laughs> for the plaintiff for the amount of $500. That's what I think it's worth, madam. Goodbye. The case is decided incredibly quickly after this, but these two were branded dumb and dumber for a lifetime. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.